Is it normal when you see smoke coming off your spoil board? Uh, I think I messed up. Now I gotta fix it. Let's talk spoil boards. The fundamental idea of a spoil board is it's a sacrificial board, which means we're gonna be replacing it eventually because it's gonna get dinged up that we mount on the surface of our router table. We want that spoil board to be set such that we, our router bit can reach every point of it so that we can completely surface it off. You wanna be able to anchor it down really solid so it's a solid base. When you put your anchors down in, you wanna have them inset below the surface so that when we plane this off with our router, it doesn't run into any of those bits. You want it significant so that you could do this multiple times and resurface your spoil board before you have to actually replace it. That's the big idea of a spoil board. If this is your first CNC, I would make it as simple as possible. Get yourself some one inch pocket screws, get yourself a drill bit that has a countersink, countersink about every four inches, a spot for your pocket screws, and go ahead and put those into your table. Remember, make sure that the head of the screw is below the surface, maybe four or five millimeters, and it goes all the way down in, and then you're ready to surface. That is a great start for a first time CNC. -er. Now that you've got your spoil board fastened to the surface of your CNC, you've got all the heads of your screws significantly below the surface so that we're not gonna hit them with our bit and cause a major accident or break our bit or our CNC. We're ready to go ahead and surface the spoil board. So I'm gonna go ahead and zero out my axes. I've installed a sharp pointed bit Right now, supposedly on my screen, it says the position of my X is 444, my Y is 88, and my Z is 33. I assure you that I am not 444 millimeters away from this point, which means readings on the screen are very, very different from reality. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and click 0X, 0y, 0z, that did not actually zero them, it just reset the numbers. And now I'm gonna actually go move them to the right position and then I'm gonna hit re-zero. So I'll start with my y and I'm gonna move it to the front of my bed. So I'm holding down the y jog. It's tough to see where I'm at, so I'm gonna press the z minus and I'm gonna get relatively close to the surface without actually touching the surface. Now I'm gonna go back a little bit more with my Y minus. I'm still above the surface. That's really close to the, the, where the Y should be. I'm gonna go ahead and now click on the zero Y because I believe that bit tip is right over this edge of that particle board. And that's to me, my zero position for my Y. So I'm zeroing my Y at that position. Now I'm gonna click on the X minus and I'm gonna move that bit over gradually. Just a little bit of time, you can just do quick clicks until the tip of that bit is right on the edge. So I have it set this way and I have it set this way, click, zero X. I'm gonna click the Z plus to raise my bit. I'm gonna go ahead and scoot back out in the middle of the table, press my Y plus and my X plus. We're not gonna be surfacing our actual spoil board with the bit that we have in there right now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove that bit. Obviously my router is off. We're gonna put in what we're gonna to use to surface, whether that might be a quarter inch end mill, or maybe you have purchased yourself a surfacing bit, put it up inside just like you would any ordinary bit. Twist it tight and it is critical that you make sure that you don't just hand tighten these, but you actually snug them up with a wrench. Now, how far that went up in my collet is gonna be very different than my other bit. So you always have to uh, re-zero these things when you change bits. So since my table is relatively flat here, I'm just going to go ahead and lower this down with my Z, making sure I don't get my fingers under there. And I'm gonna use a playing card. I go pretty fast until I get close. And then I'm gonna click one at a time. Right now, I'm only moving down 
0.1 millimeters per click. And I'm going to continue down until that playing card is pinched and will not move. One click at a time. There we go. At that point, we're going to hit 0Z. This is critical because you can definitely crash your machine if you don't do this. Right away after you've zeroed that Z, hit Z plus and raise that router bit up. If we want to go to 00, zero we can click on the go to X, Y, zero. Our surfacing bit is now centered over the zero, zero position of our machine. I'm gonna go ahead and lower it down just so you can see a really important concept that pertains to G-Sender surfacing path that we're gonna create. G-Sender will set up the path, essentially align on with whatever job board dimensions that you give it to, to run on. Meaning, if that's our zero, zero, our bit, if it's an inch wide, will go out a half an inch out beyond this way and a half inch beyond this way as it does the path around the outside and then it will continue to pocket out all the way on the inside. What that means is you better make sure that, for example, this T track that I have on the side is low enough that when we take off a very small layer off the surface, we're not going to actually run into something. So just because you know what your bit dimension is, the surfacing path, I'm telling you, will stick the bit out beyond that a little bit. Pay attention where you can ruin a bit really, really, really easily. So let's go ahead and go a little further now and set up our surfacing path inside G-Sender. We're hooked up in G-Sender. I'm gonna go to surfacing, which is in the top menu at the t over here, click on it. So this is a nice tool inside G-Sender called the surfacing tool that will allow you to surface not only spoil boards but other boards as well and all you have to do is put the area that you want to surface in this would be the uh, left to right distance on my particle board that I have mounted on my CNC I already have tested this and made sure that my CNC is capable of going from zero all the way out to that distance without running into a limit switch the length is forward and backward on my particular machine and I have also tested my machine with the jog controls to make sure I can go from zero out to 357. I'm also looking to make sure that my bit, when I go out to those positions, would fully cover the area. The router bit, since I'm using a surfacing bit that's one inch wide, I changed this setting to 25.4 millimeters. If you're using a quarter inch end mill, you'd put 6.35. So this is whatever your bit is that you're going to be machining with. It's not what's in the collet. Uh, but it's actually what is surfacing on the table. The spindle RPM, if you have a spindle, you would set it here. I'd go with the default if you don't know any specifics about your spindle setting. But if you have a variable speed Makita or some other router like that, then this isn't gonna matter because it's not actually sending the signal to your router. That's controlled manually with a twist dial on the top of your router. The step over is a really, really important feature. The default, you can see when I hover over it, is 40 with a step over. I tried to speed this up and I put it at 90%. And when I did and I ran the G code and surface off my spoil board with this spiral design, I found that it left a ridge on the center of my spoil board. It shouldn't do that. It's a little bit of a software glitch. So I would definitely keep it 40 to 50% on the step over because at least this older version of G Sender had a bit of a bug in the way they set up the code. Maybe they fixed it in the newer versions, but to be on the safe side, you wanna do that. Feed rate, I would go with the default for the moment. And for the layer depth, this is how far it's going to go when it does the first pass over to the top of your spoil board. It's gonna cut in 0.5 millimeters all the way across the surface. The max depth, is how many passes it would do. So if I take, if these two are the same, it would just basically do one pass. If this would have been set to one millimeter and that was 0.5, then you would take one divided by 0.5, it would do complete two separate passes going a half a millimeter down in each pass. I like to keep these identical and the same, and I prefer to keep the layer depth 
relatively small. It's less stress on your router. And also, it keeps you from having to shave too much of your spoil board away. That means in the future, if you ever have to resurface, you've got more room to resurface. Just a suggestion, try 0.5 millimeters. That's a good position. If you get all done with surfacing and you find that you still have spots that were not cleared off, then you can go ahead and just lower your Z0 down to slightly lower and run that same router um, G-code pattern that we're going to generate here in a second. Then you have a choice on which pattern you want it to machine off the surface of your spoil board. You can do a spiral or you can do left to right. This little spot will tell you where your origin is on your table. My zero zero point is down here. That's really important that you have it set for however your router is. So make sure, you know, if I clicked up here, I'm gonna get a completely different G code than if I had this selected down here. So make sure you have it set for however you set up your router. And I'm gonna do the spiral pattern come down here and click on generate G code. It takes a moment. Here's the pattern that it would generate in order to uh, surface off the spoil board. It says run on the main visualizer. That does not mean when I click on this, it's going to start up my router. When I click on this, it just shifts that G code back to the normal routing screen for G sender. There we go. If I were to come and click on this start button right there, my router would start. It is critical before you ever hit that start button that you make sure that you have already properly zeroed your Z axis, your Y axis, you've set your Z zero appropriately. And here's a mistake that's fairly common and it'll get you in a lot of trouble. Make sure you turn on your router before you actually click on that start button. Make sure you have a way to shut off your router, either with an emergency stop or maybe you've got it on a power cord in case something goes very wrong with your, uh, your surfacing bit. You wanna think about how in the world you're gonna shut this thing down quick if something goes astray. Before you surface a spoil board, I would take a pencil and I would actually just scribble all the way across everything on your spoil board, just squiggly lines everywhere. That way, when you surface it, you can be assured that all those lines get machined away. And if they're all machined away, you know that your spoil board has been completely leveled relative to your position of your router. If there's spots that still have pistol lines, then that means you've got to run the spoil board surfacing one more time. You can just leave the lines as they are of whatever remained, scoot down your Z position to slightly lower, re-zero it, and just run the same code a second time. It is very probable that the very first time you go and try to level up your spoil board that it might take several passes of 0.5 millimeters in order to level it out. I've done comp two complete passes with the surfacing, taking it down a half a millimeter each time. I'm going to need at least one more because I can still see some pencil lines and some spots on my spoil board, but we are getting there. For example, when I did my first spoil board, it actually took me five passes before I leveled it up and sort of six. Why do I say sort of six? Well, I did pass number one with the pencil marks. It wasn't leveled. Everything went well. I did all the normal parameters. I then went to pass number two and repeated pass number three, pass number four. So I'm down two millimeters. At that point, I pretty well have it all level. And that is when things went crazy for me. I was running the same G code the same router speed, the same bit, the same material, the same G code. And I went to do my final pass. And what I found is I started scorching my wood. And when I started scorching my wood, I was about halfway through my job. And I thought, you know what? I really want this to finish out. And I'll just take a piece of sandpaper when I get done. And I'll just sand any scorch marks away and I'll be fine and dandy. All will be well. But what I found is it got worse and worse, and I had to hit emergency stop in the middle of the job. Needless to say, I was a little frustrated, so I raised up my bit. I moved it over to the zero position again, and I faultily reasoned that the problem was maybe I was trying to cut too deep. Maybe I just had run my router bit too long. It got too hot. I just need to let it cool down, so I let my router bit cool all the way back down, changed my surfacing so I was only going 0.1 millimeters, and decided to rerun my spoil board. And when I did, things got very, very bad. And that's when you saw the, the board that was completely smoky looking. 
In hindsight, the first spoil board, getting those burn marks was a great thing. It made me rethink my design, adjust, and in the end, I think I ended up with something better than I would have had before. Maybe you can get some ideas as well. Let me share with you what I ended up doing. First thing I did is I took the burnt spoil board, the MDF, I resurfaced it so it was flat, and then I cut three new pieces of MDF and mounted it on the surface using pocket screws, evenly spaced, that I inset the heads. I then went and put threaded inserts throughout, evenly spacing them with my CNC and separating each of these pieces with some T-Track. The T-Track I used has the ability to accept any size head. It's called Universal. Highly recommend you build your uh, jig for your CNC with Universal. That way you can put any uh, head on there, whether it's a hex head like this or whether it's a T-Nut like this. Works great. With this design, here's some options you could use to hold things down. The simplest and maybe one of the most versatile is just a piece of hardwood with a quarter inch bolt through it. You put it on here, just a regular wing nut, and just tighten it down on this. And of course that can be clamped on a board. If you wanna make it fancier, cut a slot groove through the middle of this. You can of course use metal to hold things down and we can tighten this down with a Phillips. So any of the threaded inserts in the middle of the table, we could use something like that. You can buy pre-made clamps like these Rocklers. They're super beefy uh, and strong. The catch is if you hit them with your router bit, it will break your bit. Whereas if you use just a regular humble wood clamp, if you hit it, it's not gonna ruin your bit. You can buy these little knobs for your CNC that will go on a, a uh, bolt and you can put a little epoxy on the top. And then of course, put something like the piece of metal or maybe that piece of wood underneath and you can use it to clamp down in the middle of your table. That is a good solution. Those are very inexpensive to buy. You could 3D print them if you want. You can buy fancier clamps like this that has a T nut underneath and it's set so that it will put it at a perfect 90 to your table when you clamp it down. All of these are really great solutions because that first layer was surfaced right. If I ever mar this up, I can just yank off a board and put a new one down and it's practically leveled to begin with, which is super nice. When you do do your uh, surface board, I would recommend you cut some extra pieces. I cut extra pieces for this so that in the future, when this gets stinged up, because it eventually will, I'm ready to go and I'm set and I don't have to go through the process of measuring everything out. So what are my thoughts after making the spoil board? I really love it. My first one that I did on my first CNC had all kinds of lines because it wasn't trammed properly. The tramming tool worked like a gem. I'm super happy with the pool noodle vacuum. It got 90% of the dust and it was so easy. If you try it without it, you're gonna find out you'll generate bags of dust when you surface the spoil board. The fact that I had that vacuum hooked up made this much, much more pleasant. It's better on your lungs, it's better on your garage, it's better on everything. Uh, it looks a little hokey, the pool noodle. If you haven't seen that video, it's really, really easy to make and it will mount on almost any of the routers that have up and down. I uh, highly recommend that you humble yourself and give it a try if you don't already own a vacuum. This does a pretty good job. One comment and tip that I could give you, when you get the particle board, it's better if you get thicker rather than thinner. I'd prefer it if it was 20. When you're putting threaded inserts, my threaded inserts were 15 millimeters in depth. You can also get them uh, 10 millimeters in depth, some extra pieces. I cut extra pieces for this so that in the future, when this gets stinged up, because it eventually will, I'm ready to go and I'm set and I don't have to go through the process of measuring everything out. Hope that gives you some ideas. I'm at 995 subscribers. You'd be doing me a huge favor if you haven't subscribed, if you could go ahead and hit subscribe right now. It'll help me get to that thousand mark. It's been a long time in coming. I think we can do it with this video with a little help from you. And if you like this video, I think you're going to really like this next one. Tune in. We'll do a little bit more with this spoil board. Next video, I'll show you how to set it up for Square, and maybe we'll cut our first official project.